everyone, my name is Echo, and in today's video, I bring you a working debug screen for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. This is supported on Touch, such as iOS and Android, does support controller, and also supports keyboard and mouse. And it can be toggled on or off simply by the tap of one button. There is a download for this in the description and also in the pinned comments. I am going to show you how this works on keyboard and mouse, but I'll also show you how simple it can be on iOS and Android. This was created by A Star. The link to check them out is down below. Go and support them. They're really talented. There are two places you can download this. So let me show you how to install it. The download link will take you to this page. When you're on this page, it's going to say click on an ad. It's then going to ask you to visit a different page where you've just got to wait. When you're on this page, you don't need to do anything at all. So don't be tapping any links. You just got to wait like 20 seconds. After you've waited, it will say unlock content. Then it will take you directly to his website, which it will show you how to download. And you just simply download it. It will take you to the media fire and then just wait for it to be installed. Double check that the behaviors pack and also the resource pack are currently in the active section. If you enable the behaviors pack, it should automatically toggle the resource pack. Then you're good to go. Let me show you how this works. Now there is one setting that you need to change. This is for all platforms. Head into settings and scroll down to video. Make sure hide paper doll is off, okay? That is a recommendation from the creator. Now, I currently have this active. And you'll notice here, we have no paper doll. So your coordinates are located on the top left. This is as simple on keyboard and mouse as hitting the F8 key. Now, this is really, really useful because it's not something that you have to hold an extra item in your inventory for. It's not something that you have to keep changing inside of your settings. Now, before you guys run off and you're wondering how certain things work and what certain things are, let me explain this to you. So as you guys know, Minecraft Bedrock Edition doesn't typically have a debug screen. It does, but it's hidden from the public eye. Java does. By the toggle of one button. So this is now available for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Again, huge shout out to A Star who made this possible. So let's go over all the details. We'll start from left to right so you guys understand. So we have facing directions. I'm currently facing south. Now, if you don't know the directions of the sun, which I guess not everyone does. Again, if we start to turn around here, it's going to tell you the location. So I know that this is the north location. And I know that this is going to be east. This is going to be south. And this is going to be west. Now, you might not use coordinates in your world. So you could just say to your friend, hey, head south if you're coming from the north location. And we can kind of meet up at this really, really awesome location. Now, below that, we have Chunk L-O-C. That's abbreviation for location. So it's telling you your chunk locations. I'm pretty sure you know how chunk locations work. But if you don't, let me very briefly explain. A chunk in Minecraft is 16 by 16. So that I know that I'm currently on the 15th one. If I go to the next one, I'm currently classed on the 16th. Which means we are currently on a border of a chunk. And if I go to this one, we're just going to hit both of them. They're both on zero. If I was to keep going this way, you can see this is going to be the whole entire chunk. So I know if I go back here and I was to go in reverse here, I would know that this is a whole entire chunk. Now, if you were trying to figure out where on earth the slimes are spawning, this could be so useful for you. But there is one more thing I want to show you how useful chunk locations can be. Bedrock players, I know I'm not the only person who has struggled when it comes to finding buried treasure. You spend so much time digging everywhere, and in some cases, you do not find it. Well, with this, when it comes to Java, I think it's on 9 and 9. I think when it's on Bedrock Edition, if you set the locations to 8, 8, you should be able to instantly pinpoint where the buried treasure is. So it's telling me, if I'm correct here, it should be down here. And as you guys can see, we've instantly located the buried treasure. There is no need to dig absolutely everywhere. Just to double check here, I've gathered myself a second buried treasure map. So Java is 9-9, Bedrock is 8-8. So 
But honestly, you don't even need to hold this anymore. So if we go to, there's eight. We go across this way one more. It's telling me that the buried treasure should be down here. And it's 100% accurate every single time. Underneath that, you have angle of attack. I'm currently looking at zero degrees. If we look up a little bit, I'm looking at 38. I'm looking at 69. I'm looking at 90 degrees. If I go down very slowly, you can see it's updating in real time all the way down to negative 90. Remember, you don't have to have this active always. Below that, we have biome. We're in a jagged peak. We're now going to be entering a grove. We're then going to be entering a meadow. And if I'm correct, we should be entering a dark oak forest, roofed forest, which of course does have this mansion. If you missed my previous video, go and check it out. But yeah, you can pinpoint the exact location you are currently in. So roofed forest, you can find the exact point where this changes. So I know from this block to this block, to this one, to this one, there is the difference between two biomes. It updates in real time. Now, what's even better about this is if I was to go underground and do a little bit of digging, it also tells you underground. You guys are probably thinking, hey, Echo, why is this useful as well? Well, if we're going to go over here, dripstone cave, there you go. It tells you the underneath biomes as well. So it does tell me we're in a dripstone cave. If I was to go to forward slash game mode spectator, have a little bit of a look around here. I mean, yeah, I I'd be able to tell. I'm curious, though. If we go down here, does it tell me I'm in a deep, dark, ancient city? And that would be correct. We're in a deep, dark biome. It also tells you light level. Now, obviously, mobs need a light level of zero to spawn. We're in an ancient city, deep, dark. So the only thing that spawns down here is going to be the warden. But as we get a little bit closer to this soul lantern, you can see we're now at a light level of six. So if you're in a world and you cannot figure out why and where mobs are spawning, just hit that button and it's going to tell you exactly what the light level is. Elapsed time, top right, really simple. It tells you how long you've been in a specific world for. So this could be used if you wanted to use it for speed running in specific seeds. Below elapsed time, it will tell you the dimension you're in. I'm currently in the nether. Everything also works inside of here as well in terms of directions angle of attack, chunks, biome, light level, etc. And this does update in real time. So as we head back into the overworld, it's going to tell me we are in fact in the overworld. It works for the end as well. We also have entity counter. Now it's telling me there's a lot of entities around here, which kind of makes sense because we have villagers. As we get away from here, the entity counter should drop. Now if it doesn't drop, there you go. You just hit the floor. It will update when you hit the floor. It will also tell you if you're inside of a village or not. As we enter this village, it changes to true. As we go underground, it updates and says we are currently underground. Weather is currently clear. So if I was to do forward slash weather and we do, let's do thunder. It's going to tell me that it's thundering. It says it's raining. And as it starts to tick, it will say that it's thundering. We also have a day and uh, sorry, a day counter. You've got moon phases. So you can see how long you've been in your world for difficulty. So we do forward slash difficulty P. It's telling me it's peaceful. We do H. It's telling me it's hard. We also have the TPS, which is ticks per second passing in the world. Normal by default is 20, by the way. You hit F8 and it's gone. That's what it's like on keyboard or mouse. Let's check it out on touch. If you're on mobile, same applies. Enable the behaviors pack and it will automatically enable the resource pack. I did forget to mention this, but you need to make sure beta API and Molang features are enabled. This also applies for other platforms as well. Mobile players, once you're in game, you will notice an extra button at the top. You have your emote, you have your chat, you have your settings. And you have this star. That's a nice touch from the creator. When you tap this star, everything pops up. You can see everything in terms of facing directions, chunk location, angle of attack, biome. We're entering from desert into mangrove, light level, elapsed time, overworld entity, etc. It is all there. It's incredible. It is so useful. He added an extra button. I think people have also managed to align this button with the ability to change perspective. Still drives me crazy that we're in 2023, nearly 2024, and Pocket Edition players can't change their perspective this easy. 
it is so useful the download link is below check it out i'm a huge fan of this if you have any questions leave them in the comments section hey you can now book me on cameo link is down below